A lot going on. Let me cover a few local things and then uh, get on some other things and get to get the Q and A. Um, first thing I want to mention is give you an update with regards to uh, the Talco uh, Alcoa plant. Um, as you know, uh, quite some time uh, working with the management team there, as well as uh, the local machinists, uh, uh, 160. Um, we have been uh, trying to get a uh, get a long term plan to provide power to the uh, uh, to the uh, facility out there, so that the job uh, jobs can be stabilized, uh, and that um, and that uh, you know, the, the, the tax base uh, that serves the school district and the city can continue. That people can continue work to work there. That families in Squaxin County can continue to have good uh, good paying jobs. And uh, we're at a we're at a, a point right now. It's kind of no, I wouldn't, wouldn't call it a tipping point. We're at a, we're at a crucial time right now, where uh, Bonneville Power Administration, which provides power directly to the facility, is is looking at some of the short term and long term um, ideas for uh, for that power and how much ought to be paid and so on. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> again, there's there's nothing more specific than that that I that I have for you, other than to say that we're uh, my office. I got elected first in 2000, and we jumped into this uh, issue in 2001 during the energy crisis, and uh, been working it ever since. And the employment numbers have been up and down since, kind of a roller coaster. It's been really tough for this family. There, but, you know, my office continues to be fully dedicated, fully supportive um, of finding a solution to get those jobs there. Um, I know some folks are here uh, from uh, from Intalco, and, and they may want to have a comment. Thank you. you moments, huh? Just thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> it's the most important thing. Yeah, sure. Thanks yeah, for thanks. getting them back to the table. We definitely appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. It's a, it's a different challenge than a couple of years ago where it was an energy crisis. Now it's sort of a global economic crisis that's, that's driving a lot of these issues. And uh, so it's a little bit a little challenge. Second thing uh, locally is uh, on Tuesday night, Congress, the House, passed a resolution asking the uh, asking uh, the, uh, the government to recognize June 10th, 2009 as National Pipeline Safety Day uh, on the 10th anniversary of the Watkins uh, Creek explosion. And uh, they did pass, uh, passed unanimously by, by voice vote um, later in the evening. And, and uh, this is just one step to continue to raise the profile of pipeline safety because next year, one of the, uh, one of the things that Congress will have to do is to reauthorize that that pipeline safety bill that we passed in 2006, and in 2002, to upgrade uh, the safety uh, considerations of operating pipelines, both uh, liquid fuel, uh, like the electric pipeline, or uh, natural gas, like the Williams pipeline, both that run through uh, here. So uh, that's something you need to need to watch, uh, uh, continue to watch for. Uh, it's going to be, you know, we're trying to get the administration's attention on this as well. <laughs> We're able to get somebody from the administration to come out here Wednesday and speak at um, at one of the uh, one of the events um, the, to, uh, to remember the, the June 10th explosion. So we are uh, working with the administration to make sure that it stays high on their on their profile. For uh, veterans, uh, something that's great news because you all have been working on this for the last um, 12 years, perhaps. Uh, the community-based outpatient clinic in Mount Vernon has opened, it's open for business. And uh, now finally, uh, you, veterans will not have to drive all the way to Seattle for uh, primary health care. In fact, there's other, uh, there's other health care beyond just primary medical care. So for, for more specialized care, you still have to go to Seattle. But for veterans who are currently enrolled to get primary care in Seattle, please call the VA and get, if you so wish, to get enrollment uh, transferred to uh, the Mount Vernon Clinic. Now we've heard back from veterans, uh, both uh, really happy about this and veterans happy but. And the but part is that uh, the VA clinic is not yet fully staffed, but it is it has staff and they're seeing people, but not yet fully staffed. So some of the uh, uh, some folks can't yet get uh, appointments there for uh, for their primary care. But uh, that will that problem should go away as they hire up and get people um, get people in place. But. We'll be doing a celebration there July 2nd uh, with uh, Senator Murray and, and, and as many veterans that, uh, and families that, that want to come. But that's a, that's a victory for the veterans and for the work of the veterans uh, in this area. So congratulations, um, congratulations on that. 
Uh, a couple of things. I want to give you a, a brief overview. It may not seem brief, but uh, it'll, it'll be brief enough. A brief overview of some of the things that we've worked on in Congress for the last several months. So you're tracing out a letter here, uh, signed by me, proving that you won. So that's, uh, <laughs> be, sure, be sure you get that. A um, couple of things, uh, and then we'll go to Q and A. Over the last several months, uh, we have um, uh, passed the Economic Recovery Package. Um, to focus on saving and creating jobs, to helping those hurt most in this recession, as well as to set a foundation for some longer term growth in this country. Uh, that was uh, on the 17th of February. Um, and then net, the, in March, the, we put into, into action President Obama's housing plan. It's designed to um, keep people, of as many as 9 million families, uh, throughout the country in their homes. Uh, we passed the expansion of the federal uh, health, uh, sorry, the state's children's health insurance program, or SCHIP. That's expanding health care to about 11 million kids uh, nationwide. Uh, a few other things uh, that we're doing now uh, that folks may have questions about or, or, or uh, on details and so on. Uh, working on this energy, comprehensive energy reform bill to reduce our dependence on foreign sources of energy, strengthen our national security as well, and, and to move towards a, a longer term clean energy economy. Uh, we are, um, the President has yet to do this, there's still a lot of wrangling going on, but I think it's an important part to address is financial market reform to develop an appropriate regulatory framework for how financial markets work today. Uh, we have one that is really geared up um, to work very well in 1933. Uh, we need to update that. And then, uh, as well, again, I, there may be some folks questions about health care reform, reforming health care, and, and that debate uh, right now. So where are we now with the economy? I want to give some folks an uh, idea. I, I'd say the economy still, in my view, and a lot of other folks' view, is still a, still a mixed bag, uh, frankly. Uh, there are some glimmers of hope, or green shoots, as the president used that term in a, in a speech, but. Um, but you know, the economy is stabilized, but there's still a lot of things that are dragging us down. Lending between banks is somewhat thawed, which is a good sign. The interest rate that banks offer to other banks to, to loan between them, that interest rate has come down quite a bit. That's a good, that's a good sign uh, for the economy. But uh, lending to small business directly and to consumers directly is still pretty tight. So it's kind of a, it's a six of one and half a dozen the other kind of thing. Consumer spending has started to increase after falling for several months. That's a, that's a good sign. Um, after falling about uh, at a 4% annual rate during the entire year 2008, we've seen it grow at about 2.2% uh, 2 .2 in the first quarter, and uh, retail sales rose about a half a percent in May. That's a third increase in five months. So you know what, again, there's some of, the, some of this and there's some of that. Uh, sales of new homes have stopped falling. Um, uh, the numbers of new homes being sold has uh, stopped uh, falling. The new home sales in April rose only 0.3%, but most folks saw that and said, wow, growth. That's better news than not. Uh, but when you compare that December and January when new home sales were declining by double digit percentages, again, generally a, a better sign. Here at home, uh, Whatcom County's unemployment rate was 8.6 in April, down from 8.8 .8 in March. And around 9,300 of our neighbors in Whatcom County are looking for work. Foreclosure rates, those numbers uh, in Whatcom County dropped in May compared to April, but still very high. Let me tell you what I mean by that. There were 114 foreclosures in May in Whatcom County. That was down from 153 in April. That's great news. But in May of last year, there were 42 home foreclosures. So again, still, still pretty tough. Uh, still historically high numbers. Uh, and bankruptcy rates, um, still in April 77, people applied for bankruptcy in Washington County. It's the highest number since uh, October 05. So again, a mixed bag. Some signs, but you know, maybe things have leveled off, but leveled off down here, as opposed to leveled off up here. And now we're kind of, are we gonna be moving up or down, or where's that, where are we going from here? So still gotta still watch this very closely. 